I'm Albert Wutch and I'm cooking with carnivore and I'm, we're going to braise a shoulder clod and we're going to teach you how to up your game. So we're going to use a braising method which is a combination cooking method of browning and searing which would be the dry cooking method and then we're going to add some vegetables and some wine and some sauce which is we're adding moisture. We're going to bring it to a boil, adjust the taste and the thickness and then we're going to finish it in the oven. So it's a really good dish for less tender cuts. So braising is portion size pieces or larger. And again, we bring it to a boil, we put it in the oven, cook it, let it cook for three hours, and we can go out and split wood or cut the rest of our elk out. So we're gonna get this, and when I like to use a cast iron, a straight-sided um, sautoir or a griswold, that's what we use for braising. We don't use a bevel-sided saute pan. So we want this uh, Griswold because it's nice and heavy, it's gonna hold the heat. So while that's getting hot, we're gonna take a little bit of oil and we're in camp here. So we're doing it, we're roughing it a little bit. So we're just using whatever we've got in camp. So we'll put some oil on the meat, coat it, and we're using some Rectech freaking Greek rub. And we're gonna use that on the meat. That's a good flavor. We're using basically what's available to us. Uh, and we're going to give it a nice seasoning and get it nice and coated and seasoned. So there's salt and pepper and you can smell the spices in here. So I'm not even going to use a pepper mill or any kosher salt. It's, it's well seasoned and nice and coated right now. If you were really wanted to get fancy, you could actually tie that muscle up so that it would keep its shape. And we're going to use this this side, we're gonna put this side down first. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. There's already some oil on the meat itself. Just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan. We know it's at the smoke point already, we can see that. And I'm gonna take this piece of meat and add this, this is just the top or outside right here, this piece right here. This is the outer surface of the muscle. That's gonna go down first. Now we're gonna let that cook away from the bottom of the pan. I don't wanna move it around because it'll cool the pan down. And this big chunk of meat is pretty lean it's going to take quite a while in the oven to get it nice and tender. Once we get this brown on all sides, we're going to remove it, put it in this bowl over here, and then we're going to add our vegetables to it. And you know, you could check it. We don't want to pull it off too early, but we should get a nice caramelization on that muscle. So we got a nice looking shape piece of meat here off the front leg. Take that off. We're going to put it here in this bowl. Just let it rest. So we've seared our meat. We've taken it out. We've removed it. We've put it in a bowl. And now we're going to dig and deglaze the fond or the brown that's on the bottom of that pan. Because a lot of people will take that and then wash the pan out and send that right down the drain. That's when the chef walks up and bops them on the back of the head. Because uh, now we've got garlic, we've got onion, we've got turnips, rutabagas, carrots, celery, parsnips, and some butternut squash. So we're gonna use these as our mirepoix in with the meat and we're gonna let that simmer in that sauce. This is really gonna flavor. We don't want too much rutabaga or too much turnip because it'll give it a little stronger flavor, but we're, it'll blend it really well. Then we're gonna deglaze it with some wine have a sip of wine, and then we're gonna add some tomato product. This is just the basic concept of how to braise. Now into the pan goes onion, garlic, turnips, rutabagas, celery, carrots, and butternut squash. So we're slowly going to get a brown on this. I don't want to get it too hot. And we're going to use a brown sauce 
that we made. It's basically brown stock thickened with a roux, which was equal parts flour and butter. You could use cornstarch arrowroot uh, to thicken that liquid. And not always do we use a thick sauce. Some people like a thin broth to go with their braised dish. Some people flour the meat when they braise it or brown it. And this then they don't need a fairly thick sauce. We'll season it with a little pepper. I'm gonna throw a bay leaf in this in here as well. Okay, so we're, we got some good brown on our vegetables. So now we're gonna take and we're gonna deglaze it with some wine. So I'm gonna pour this over here because I don't want anything to ignite. That liquid removes the font. And we're gonna boil that down. So because it's gonna boil, we're gonna take and add some tomatoes to this. And we're gonna let that cook, boil that down and reduce that a little bit before we add some of our brown sauce. That wine and the fawn, then that is gonna also color that sauce so it gets darker as it cooks. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna move some of this around and we're gonna put the meat in here. And when we braise, we want liquid to be in that uh, on the meat to be halfway, about halfway to three quarters of the way up the meat. So that's getting here. Now we're gonna take and add a little bit of our brown sauce, which is fairly thick, but we've got quite a lot of wine in there. So we're gonna get this, this will come back to a boil, and then we're going to thin it out with a little bit of broth. Adjust the consistency, the flavor, we're into a boil, of course with the meat in there, cover it and put it in the oven for a couple hours. So with a piece of meat this, off the front leg like this and this size, it's probably gonna take about three hours for this to get nice and tender and soft. We'll have to check it every once in a while. It's always fork tender, meaning it falls off the fork when you stick it. And we have to adjust the consistency of the sauce. So, you know, if it's gonna be in there for three hours, it could thicken up a little bit. And you gotta remember this is gonna cook for three hours, so all these flavors are gonna marry and blend together. So we don't wanna add too much pepper or too much seasoning. So it's already come to a boil, and we're gonna cover it. So you could do this in a Dutch oven, the same dish. This is basically hot. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in the oven, then after that, Good time to eat.